Hi everybody and welcome back to I Can View This All Day and today we are talking about Rocketeer from 1991. Now, I've seen this one before but James, this is your first viewing of the Rocketeer. What, what did you think? I absolutely love this man. This is, a, this is just a blast. I love the kind of homage to like 30s pulp kind of adventure stories. There was a lot of like rockish powered characters I think back then. Yeah, it was, just, it was just fun. Like this is clearly Disney's crack at like an Indiana Jones, I think. And it really worked for me for the most part. Absolutely. Absolutely, I'm so pleased because this, this is a one that I watched years and years ago. And do you know when we go back sometimes and look at these old films, I think, oh God, it's not it's not actually measured up to how it was back then. Yeah. This absolutely did. So I watched this with my wife. It's just a fun romp is what I would call it. Right? You're absolutely right. It's very similar to, to Indiana Jones in style. Really sad that this didn't do the business back in the day and it didn't make a lot of money at the, the big screen as it were. And it kind of, it was originally planned as a trilogy, but it just fell flat in its arse. Definitely a shame. Like the, you look at this and you look at Indiana Jones and you say well why did that work and this one didn't I think it's mad how like dark this gets for like a Disney like it's got that kind of whimsical Disney music to it but then like people are perving on people in it there's like a guy gets snapped in half in half literally folded in half um there's like mobsters and Nazis and, and stuff like that like it's it's very I was taken aback quite, quite aback I didn't think it was going to get that like dark and kind of mature but it's also you know, you're right it's absolutely right it's got that darkness but it's also got that kind of childish charm to it as well and I think you know it's got a bit of flag waving for, for, for the good old Americans there, haven't they? Like, where well, you got the mobster turning on the Nazis at the end. I love that. I might be a mobster, but I'm not a Nazi. But I'm a still an American. I thought that was really, really cool. What did you think about the, the acting casting? Because we get some, some interesting people. We've got Billy Campbell, Jennifer Connelly, and Timothy Dalton, who I thought was just, he chewed it up. As the, like, Errol Flynn type, like, actor who's, a, you know, a Nazi spy. Just phenomenal in this. Like, honestly, like, one of the most fun villain portrayals, like, I've, I've watched in a while. He's just, ch just chewing and scenery. I just love how like charismatic, but he's like slimy at the same time. Yeah. I love this scene where he's like filming like this Robin Hood kind of movie and the actress keeps fucking it up. I thought that was great, you know, like with his, with his silly wig on and everything. It was just it was so much fun. Yeah, and just a great actor in this. And, and the, the twist at the end where it turns out that he's a Nazi. I didn't see that coming. And I, I don't know why I didn't see it coming, but I just didn't expect Nazis to come to come into it, you know. And I, I love how they love a little cartoon showing, <laughs> showing what the whole plan is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they did a little, just to get people on board with, with you know, the super commando basically like I thought that was that was good fun so if you haven't seen this movie it's it's set back in 38 and it's basically i mean that that was interesting as well wasn't it that had some real life characters there we had you know howard hughes and all that kind of stuff yeah I, I, I wonder why i don't know why you don't just make up a fake person for it you know like I, I, when he said howard hughes I was like oh okay and he said i get it because he's like the pioneer of like you know flying aviation isn't he so so yeah so howard's designed this rocket pack basically and now everybody's after it including the Nazis. And we start the movie with a kind of a car chase, and, and basically this this rocket pack ends up in the hands of some aviators, and shenanigans ensue. What did you think of the design of the costume and the special effects involved with the flying kind of side of things? Like I've seen the costume before, and like there's some phenomenal posters for this film. Like I, I think some were official, and some have been done like since then. Just amazing artwork, amazing like figures I've seen of it. In the movie, it it, it looks a little goofy sometimes, I think, but I I, I, do, I do like. I'd like the kind of blending of aesthetics like there's a sci-fi element but uh you know the, the 30s pulpy kind of look with the leather jacket and the pistol and everything I think it's it's, it's a cool look that costume is very reflective of the comic book version Disney execs wanted to get rid of the helmet and they wanted to go for a kind of a NASA astronaut helmet but the um, the producer fought them on that and they finally got the, the iconic helmet which I think works incredibly well I think full face cover is needed for it I think looks cool what about the special effects because I mean I think for a movie from you know the, the early 90s this does really well in terms of practical effects and flying effects a lot of stop motion in it apparently but I think it stands up I think this still looks pretty darn cool I think you can see a bit of compositing in certain moments but like for the time for what they're doing here it looks pretty pretty great I think they get the sense of speed like it matches kind of the environment it's in and how fast it's going it doesn't look off do you know what I mean you know sometimes you're, if you're watching a scene of a driving a car driving 
the car looks like it's going slower than the background is moving. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. Whereas this, I think, it matches up perfectly. And like that makes sense because Joe Johnston directed this, who worked on like a lot of the Star Wars films. He like designed Boba Fett. So like you know he has a special effects background. I think it makes sense that he would get that right. Yeah, and a lot of the effects, well, all the effects were done by Industrial Light and Magic, weren't they? So that they kind of they are big hitters in the field, I guess. So yeah, I, I thought it looked really good. I think it, it stands up. In some of the action sequences, I thought were brilliant. I love the clown in the aeroplane when he's going to try and rescue him and head through the aeroplane and things like that. Now, so he he caused that crash though, did he not? Yeah, because oh, he yeah. slammed yeah. right through yeah, the bottom yeah. of the plane. So like that was his fault. And then the next day in the newspapers, it's like Rocket Man saves pilot. It's like, well, I mean, did he need to be saved really? You know, technically, yeah, yeah te- <laughs> technically, yeah. What did you think of the big weird Frankenstein bloke? He he was an he was an ugly bugger, wasn't he? I I found it a weird choice to put like prosthetics so much prosthetics on his face I don't think it was yeah. I think you could have just got a guy that looked like why didn't you get the guy that played like Jaws in Bond to do it instead or something like I don't know why you needed to put like a fake nose and a fake chin and stuff on him it's funny because out of the entire movie it stands out as being the weirdest element for me it's almost very I don't know if you've seen the Warren Beatty Dick Tracy movie yes he, he's very kind of similar to that kind of an aesthetic you know and it just feels a bit out of place with the, the realism I guess you would argue of the movie well maybe it's a, an homage to like the kind of caricature drawings of some pulp characters back then I guess maybe yeah. that, that's the reason like he is off-putting when you look at him he looks weird so that that might be part of the reason like he looks a bit freaky I know and I get that but I think my problem with it was at times when he was talking and things like that the face prosthetics didn't work oh 100% yeah you know it looked weird bit of no choice this film as I said didn't didn't do well at the box office it cost 35 million, million to make it made that but it didn't make much on top so Disney binned the planned sequel later on in 2019 we've got a cartoon on Disney Plus which uses um, the original voice actor Bill Campbell Billy Campbell to voice an older rocketeer who hands the rocket pack over to his, uh, his daughter, I think it is. Uh, I haven't seen that, but the record's very cool. But also, there's been rumblings and rumours for many a year about a sequel to The Rocketeer. We had The Rocketeers at one point, which was going to be multiple people with the jetpacks. And then as early as 2022, Disney said that they were actively working on a sequel. Would you want to see that? Do you want to see a uh, I, I want to see those Nazi soldier ones. I want those as like an enemy. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to see that in live action. I think that'd be really cool. I Just a couple of uh, notes. I love the punch up in the blip i love that well one i love that there's just nazis in uniform just in seattle or whatever city this is taking place in, just hiding in the bushes i love that they fly a blimp uh, like just out of nowhere just flying that blimp with a, with a swastika on it in the middle of the place i thought that was great i love the fact that the little punch up on the blimp i thought was great i love that timothy dalton slams into the hollywood sign and knocks the land part off i thought that was great so it's, it's just <laughs> yeah. so much fun that sums it up for me this movie is is fun. It's an easy watch. It reminds us of a day where you could kind of watch family movies at Christmas time. Do you know what I mean? This is something I could put on with the kids and have a bit of fun with. So for me, Rocketeer is definitely a winner and I am pleased we went back and, and re-watched it and I am eager to see more. So, any final thoughts on the Rocketeer, James? Just an absolute blast from start to I love my pulpy kind of adventure stories and this was this was right up my alley. I, I love the the aesthetic of it, like the kind of the World War II setting is, is awesome. The flying sequences in it are great. Villain is incredible uh, I thought Jennifer Connelly was also like great in the, in the movie just like I mean stunning like just one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen like in this as well just unbelievable so yeah just let's just thoroughly enjoy this like this or Captain America I mean it's not even it's not even close and the funny thing is I, I think you see a lot of the genesis of Captain America the first Avenger in this as well because Joe Johnson went on to, to do that and I think a lot of the stuff I love in that stems from this the kind of like you know who can campaign door to door for yeah. America I think that has this has that kind of vibe to it as well there's a bit where he like lands in front of the American flag and everything oh, I love it yeah they're, they're in the same camp I think so I think that's part of the reason I love I love this as well so like yeah I'd rather watch the movie the real movie of Timothy Dalton as Robin Hood fighting the guy <laughs> than watch Captain America <laughs> So that's our review of The Rocketeer 1991. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this movie. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And we'll be back next time for this. Kill them all! Starship Troopers.